horror games. You either love them or you hate them. I've played so many horror games from indie games to console games and even VR horror games, which really has never really worked out well for me. Can you maybe no do that? Jesus. Ah! <laughs> But to me, a horror game needs a few things to really grab me. And one developing team called Harvester Games brought out a few games that did just that. Now, before we talk about their first game, I do have to give a warning. The game I'm about to speak about might be triggering for some people because in this game, we will be discussing ED. There will be lots of violence, blood and gore, and we'll be speaking about depression. If any of this triggers you, please don't watch. So what game is it I'm speaking about? Well, it's Harvester's game Downfall. Downfall was released on May 15th, 2009. It also got a remake called Downfall Redux, also known as Downfall 2016, on February the 15th, you may have guessed, 2016. Now the story was very much the same as the 2009 downfall with small differences such as better looking graphics, difference in music and some characters from another Harvester game added to connect the games together. I myself played the remake rather than the original so we will be following the story of the remake today since there isn't much of a difference. So what is downfall? Downfall is a story of the downfall of Joe Davis, the main character of the game. Joe suffers from PTSD from witnessing the death of his little brother Robbie and for his mum unliving herself not being able to live for the loss of her son and Joe's father blaming it all on him. Joe also suffers from schizophrenia, though we don't realise this until near the end of the game. In Downfall, Joe has taken his wife Ivy to a seaside hotel, Quiet Haven, hoping to rekindle their love as they're going through some hard times as man and wife. But upon arriving, we see Ivy suddenly acting very unhinged and she breaks up with Joe, stating she knows she's only a burden to him. The next day, Ivy is missing, kidnapped by a woman called Sophie and Joe sets out to save her no matter what. The story of the game from the first Sophie Joe meets is to find all four Sophies who are different memories. Something Joe tells himself constantly to justify killing them because killing the Sophies will shatter the one mirror in the hotel that hasn't been broken and Ivy is being kept behind the mirror. But in Quiet Haven, there is many characters Joe meets on the way, being a crazy doctor called Dr Z who is operating on a woman's body, trying to bring her back to life, which she does, and her name is Agnes. Agnes is a very pleasant, happy lady, sometimes sarcastic, but in a funny way, and she joins Joe on his journey to find Ivy, also hoping to find out more about herself, because all she remembers is her name. Though Dr Z told Joe Agnes does hold an important role in what's going on in the hotel. We also meet the manageress of the hotel a few times, a woman who's constantly trying to seduce Joe and try to get him to forget Ivy. Each Sophie we meet, we see trauma in them, from wanting to unlive themselves because of how they look or by what they have been said to them by an abusive boyfriend. We see a monstrous Sophie who is morbidly obese, who in one bathroom has tried to unlive herself in many different ways. We see a Sophie who is very skinny but still isn't happy with how she looks. And we see a crazed axe murderer wandering the corridors of the hotel and one black cat. Through everything we see and everyone we meet and each killing of Sophie from Joe's hands, we start to see the cracks in Joe's mind. At one point, Agnes and Joe get separated not long after they meet due to the axe murderer. And when she meets the Queen of Maggots, who I think was trying to warn Agnes, but she doesn't trust her. At the end of the game, we realise that Joe hasn't taken Ivy to a seaside front hotel, but rather the basement of his apartment building in Helen Street. The same building Susan Ashworth lives, from the Cat Lady. And when Susan is awakened by banging coming from Joe's apartment, she goes to check it out. When in his apartment, she sees a chair chained to the floor and a plate of rotten food on the table. 
This tells us Ivy probably stopped eating and Joe was force feeding her. This is when we realise all the Sophie Joe sees in his mind is actually parts of Ivy and her battle against her own mental health issues of having ED. That Joe thinking he was helping her was actually torturing her. And the Dr. Z Joe spoke to is actually Dr. Frank Zellman, Joe's psychiatrist in reality. To which in The Cat Lady, we see Susan finding a letter in Joe's apartment with the doctor asking Joe why he hasn't been turning up to his sessions. And Agnes? Agnes is the part of Ivy Joe fell in love with. When she was happy, bubbly, never worried about how she looked or what she ate. She was just there loving Joe and supporting him. And the manageress from the Quiet Haven Hotel, who is always flirting and coming on to Joe. In Joe's mind, she's a perfect woman. A woman who will never be too tired or say not tonight. A woman who's always ready for fun. With Joe not seeing his psychiatrist anymore and having to try and support Ivy through her ED, Joe's mind broke. And the reason the Queen of Maggots got involved in Susan is because Joe has now become the sixth parasite. And if you've played the cat lady, you will understand what that means. And the one character, Harrison, who was very cruel to the 18-year-old Sophie, telling her she was fat when she was so skinny. I cannot decide if Harrison is how Joe ended up being towards Ivy. Because you can choose to say some nasty things to Ivy during the game. Or if it's been a past boyfriend, as Joe and Ivy didn't meet again until their 20s from meeting his kids. And when they do meet his kids, Ivy's sitting outside a cafe while her mum eats inside because her mum had put her on a diet and she was a child. So we know where Ivy's ID comes from. Now, the end of the game will depend on how you play the game and choices you make, but it will never change the fact that Joe is schizophrenic and now completely believes in his delusions and has been killing people and torturing his own wife. Downfall to me was a very well written story, one that not a lot of developers would do and that's why I like it. The Harvester game team, they tell dark stories, yes they may have your normal monsters in them but these monsters are very real for some people in real life. The struggles they have can also be very real for some people and that's what I like about it. I hope you've enjoyed this synopsis of Downfall and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.